everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, where I strive to inform, encourage, and motivate you to achieve your educational goals by helping you gain admission into health-related undergrad and graduate programs. And this is part two of our CRNA versus anesthesiology collaboration with Miss Portia. All right, and so if you guys haven't checked out the first video, you can go ahead and click the link up there is also in the description box that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things we've already discussed. In this video, we're gonna wrap up that conversation and I hope that at the end of this video, you guys have a better idea of what CRNAs do and what anesthesiologists do and then some of the unanswered questions that a lot of people have about the two professions that are in the same field. But before we get started, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and press subscribe and make sure you press the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video. Uh, don't get me started. Whenever you're done with your residency, do you have any idea of how many clinical hours you will have total um, as far as it goes towards the profession of anesthesia? Or you guys don't keep track of those, those hours? Um, so it's not a uh so there there are a, so acgme is the organization that sponsors residency programs and they do have requirements of how how many hours of patient care we are supposed to reach um most residency programs and most institutions take advantage take full advantage of residents so we will not have a problem meeting those hours right because we're gonna work until we can't work no more and um it's more so focused on procedures and the numbers of intubations art lines blah 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 so we focus more on making sure we have those um standards met and then also making sure we don't work over 80 hours per week averaged over four weeks um so if we worked up to 80 hours actually i don't have a calculator with me i'm using my phones but if we worked up to 80 hours four weeks uh, uh each week and we did that for 48 weeks out the year let's just say we get four weeks of vacation which we don't but if we did get four weeks of vacation and you do all that math uh whatever 80 times uh 48 is is the max you would get in one year legally um and then you also have to consider that that does not include your personal study time for your exams so take that number divide that by four or multiply that by four and that's what your typical resident period um typical number of hours that a resident would have within a four-year span okay if so that makes sense. Start. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not. I, this, oh, this is a perfect example. How good do you have to be in math to be an anesthesiologist? <laughs> not that damn good, obviously, because I can't do it. <laughs> Let's see, eight times 48. I don't know, right? So, um, yeah, I ain't that good. So. <laughs> it's all good, though. <laughs> so, whenever you're done with everything, whenever you, you're done with your residency, and you're practicing independently, how many years total will it be? If I decide not to do a fellowship, it's 12 years. I was, a tr I was super traditional. I didn't have any dual credit classes in high school. I didn't take any AP classes in high school and test out to get college credit. When I started college as a freshman, I was literally a brand new fresh freshman with zero credits. So it took me the whole four years to finish college. And then med school is gonna be four years, period, if you don't pursue any dual degree programs while in med school. If you do any dual degree programs and you're looking at five to seven years in med school. Um, and then anesthesia at a minimum is four years as well. So four for undergrad, four for med school, and then four years for anesthesia resident, resident C. So 12 total. If I do a fellowship, it'll be 13. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah. So for CRNA, well, for me, well, CRNA, you have your, your four years, your BSN. Some people do their ADN first, do your BSN, then you do your, your graduate program. So CRNA is broken down into an MSN or a doctoral program. Um, MSN program is 24 months, 24 or 28 months, and a doctoral program is anywhere from 34 to 36 months. 
So you have a DNP, which is your doctor of nurse practitioner, then you have a DNAP, which is your doctor of nurse anesthesia practice. They both are terminal degrees, which means once you've completed, you're done. No more degrees after that. Um, however, their focus is a tad bit different. So your DNP focuses, have, they have more credit hours with courses that focus on the nursing as a whole, leadership and foundations and improvement, whereas your DNAP focuses mainly on anesthesia, how to improve um, anesthesia qualities or your leadership qualities in, in anesthesia. But we both sit for the same boards. Um, we both have the same amount of uh, clinical hours, and we both pretty much are, are trained the exact same way to do the exact same thing. It's just depend, just a, a name change. So I'm in a DNAP program, so most of my courses are all anesthesia-based. I think I have three courses that doesn't involve anesthesia, but the rest are all anesthesia-based. And then you have your MSN, which is a Master of Nursing Science. Um, MSN typically graduate with about 2,000 clinical hours. And also, we also have to meet certain A-line and IB and intubation numbers. And your, D and your doctoral programs will graduate with about 25 to 3,500 to 3,000 clinical hours. Um, and also meeting the requirements for the A-lines and intubations and stuff like that. I personally have a question um, because this is something I was going to share in one of my videos that I'm going to use this video to address. For the DNP or DNAP, one thing that I found during my research is that um, one of the big differences is that the DNP programs are sponsored or they are through a actual nursing, a school of nursing or nursing school. And the DNAP programs are through just a, a health science profession school or how how does that work or is there even a difference that's just something that i read yeah that's true um because the one that i'm in is not attached to well no well that's not actually or they may true. it may be a nursing school at the institution but the program is not through a nursing program right so it's two different it's two different things um yeah for example, FIU, their whole nursing program, if you go to their website, they have, they sponsor all of their nursing um, degrees in the same place. So they have a yeah. DNP. Whereas yeah. in my school, we have a, a, a separate school for nursing and a separate school for anesthesia. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for my, my subscribers who are watching, uh, if you choose the DNAP route, then know that that won't be through or attached to a specific nursing program. Right. But it's still the same, same yeah. preference. It's really just based on what school you want to go to. And if that school has a DNP or DNAP. Or DNP, right? <laughs> right. That's um, how I felt like NDDO. It was kind of like, well, I want to stay at Houston, so <laughs> it did is. <laughs> Right. And some people will say, oh, well, you can't be a professor if you do a DNAP. That's not true. You can still be a professor and do a DNAP because um, it's a doctoral degree. So you want to talk about what you what your career plans are once you get done with residency? Are you planning to do like a your own business? Are you going to do pain management? Yeah. So um, my career plans are a little different than most doctors. Um, like I said earlier, I never grew up saying I wanted to be a doctor. Like, don't get me wrong, like I'm just beyond blessed and excited that it happened for me. Um, but people are my passion and it does not have to be through medicine alone. So that's why I'm on YouTube. That's why I'm on TikTok because I want to reach people in general, not just sick patients, which is who the anesthesiologists come in contact with, sick patients who just want to get better health-wise, but not necessarily patients or people who just want to get better in life, period. So my actual plans are to work part-time anesthesia while I pursue other um, entrepreneurship opportunities. I'm currently in the process of starting a nonprofit organization and then also setting up a mentorship program for uh, minority but disadvantaged students in general who were like me and who never thought that they can get to this point and who are interested in any healthcare 
feel because I feel like, especially when it comes to the African American community, we are not exposed or taught uh, a lot of uh, a lot about the opportunities that exist. Um, in the healthcare field, whether you want to get your bachelor's, master's, or doctor's, there are a lot of options out there. And we also, and it's also not stressed in our community to aim for those type of goals. And so I want to use my influence and my platform to help other, um, you know, students who are coming up through high school or in college and just really don't have a mentor, don't, don't know what to do, don't, don't know where to go. And uh, I honestly uh, plan on turning that into a business of some sort um, to where I won't have to work full-time anesthesia and I'll be able to pursue my, you know, medical goals or whatever or interests and then also be able to actually make real change in people's lives um, that I come in contact with. So that's my plan. <laughs> um, what about you? I'm glad you mentioned the thing about um, um, us, a black community, not being not being directed towards certain types of professions. Because yeah. for me, it was the same thing. I was like, "Well, I don't see any any black CRNAs," um, yeah. but you have to you have to go find them. And so yeah. that's what I did. I got on social media, I got on Instagram. Then I found this. There's this great um, community called Diversity CRNA. It was started by a black CRNA. She goes to campuses around the country and, and uh, teaching black nurses about anesthesia. And we do workshops. It's, it's awesome. It's called Diversity CRNA Mentorship. So you guys should check it out. Yeah. Um, I went to that event. Girl, I was like, what? I mean, just blackness all around. Changed the life, huh? Yes. I was like, yep, I'm doing this. I'm going for it. Right. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, and so that brings me into career plans. So for a CRNA, you can do, depending on your state, you can do independent or, or, or work under someone. If you're in an independent state, you can start your own clinic, your pain management clinic. I've seen people do ketamine clinics. Um, so the um, options are there. Um, for me, because I've been in school all my life as well. I just want to work. I, so I'm just, my plan is to work like, uh, yes. My plan is to work in, I want to do like giving my three days a week, giving my two days a week and just let me be for the rest of the week. Um, so see, I know you can't work in a hospital in an OR setting, uh, work in 12s or 10s, however the hospital does it. Um, some hospitals do 24 hour shifts. You do two of those a week, I think. You sleep at the hospital and you work during the 12 hours during the day. You can do an outpatient clinic, like a plastics clinic. You can work nine to five, Monday through Friday. I ain't about that life. I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, or like I said, you can open up your own business. But for me, I want to do a hospital OR. Um, hospital just all that I know is what I'm comfortable with right now is what I know. So yeah, that's the plan for that. Um, which brings me to the question or conversation about the OR setting. You know, the what is going on now with um, AAs and CRNAs and anesthesiologists? So right now in the profession, there's this... Um, this unspoken situation, call it politics, as um, concerned the de independence versus the um, dependence of CRNAs. Should we work by ourselves? Are we confident enough for that um, skill-wise? Or should we work in what we call um, a care team? So under a care team, you have your anesthesiologist who's your attending, who's over the entire team. And under that person works several CRNAs, depending on your state, there could be AAs. So AAs are your um, anesthesiology assistants. So not all states recognize um, AAs. I think it may be 15 states or so um, that recognize that profession. CRNAs, however, is recognized everywhere in this country, but we aren't we're able to work independently in all states. And when I say independently, that means I go in and I, I'm my own boss, pretty much. I don't have to um, answer to anyone else versus a care team. Then I have someone over me who can direct me on a plan of care, who can step in whenever I'm having issues or who can just be someone to bounce ideas off of. Some people feel as though um, CRNA should not be independent because maybe because of our clinical hours aren't as much as the medical doctors or maybe because we don't have as much schooling. Whereas in other people, 
would love for us to be independent because it gives us more of a range to reach more to reach more people. As far as I'm concerned, I could go either way. Um, if if you want to be independent, go to the independent states. If you doesn't matter to you, then you can work wherever you would like. Um, my advice would be just to be in a place where you feel like you're part of a team and not an outcast on a team. So that's something to be aware of whenever you go into anesthesia, whether it's on the medical doctor side or on the CRNA side. Yeah. In my experience, I have more, I've had more experience with arrogant doctors versus, you know, the more calm and laid back and they're not trying to like shove their credentials down your face. Right. Um, so from what I experienced, most of the doctors are kind of, they take more of the leadership role. Um, they take it further than what it really has to be. Instead of allowing the anesthesiologist and the CRNA to work together to come up with a plan or respecting the plan of the CRNA, sometimes the plan of the CRNA kind of gets overlooked and um that you know they just end up doing what the anesthesiologist wants to do and, and i experienced that too as a resident like sometimes what we want to do as residents we don't get to do because the anesthesiologist isn't kind of being a team player they're being the boss and um that's just my experience but in a lot of places it is a anesthesia care team and you do work with doctors who are you know laid back and they respect the the thought process and decision making of the resident or the crna and it is a collaboration and you do work alongside each other um and you know the crna's plan of care is respected the resident's plan of care is respected and you come to a mutual agreement of what what is the best management for the patient because at the end of the day that's all it's about is safety right. for the patient and making sure they get what they need and they come out of the uh, operation with all all 10 toes all 10 fingers and they can think right and they wake up so <laughs> um i'm just putting it into simple terms but um it really just depends like like she said your location uh where, where you practice and the model that they have for doc for anesthesiology residents and people interested in going to med school um whether you go to a residency that's sponsored by an academic institution or by a community hospital you will have two totally different experiences cool so i cover a lot of stuff a lot of information um but we want to let you guys know the difference between, to try to show you that there are more similarities between us and differences. So there, it's understandable why you get confused between what we do, um, by anesthesia, anesthesia. So it just depends on what route you want to take. Exactly. And if you haven't checked out my uh, previous video where I talk about just kind of co uh, giving an overview of comparing CRNAs to anesthesiologists, you can check that video out. But in that video, I say that the only main difference is that if you want to be called doctor, literally, and, and honestly, CRNAs are they're they're on their way to being required to having their doctor's degree anyway. So they're gonna have doctor in front of their name, um, and that's happening now. You know that that whole transition is happening now. So if you want to be a medical doctor, if you want to be a physician. Um, then you need to go to med school and become an anesthesiologist. If that's not important to you, if title's not important to you, if wearing a white coat and having that type of respect or whatever, if you don't care about that crap, CRNA. I didn't say that. But I would definitely consider um, going to CRNA school because the work in which you do is the same. Again, if you guys have any feedback or questions, be sure to comment down below in the comment section as well as if you have any requests, let us know. Hope this was helpful and informative. As always, you guys have a great day.